struggle right now is how to help my two littles get along. They don't spend a lot of time together, but when they do, there's some toy snatching, pushing, hitting, and lots of screaming. I'm especially lost on how to deal with the screaming. I currently say something like, look at your little brother's face. I think he's telling you he doesn't like it when you're that loud at him. My tone is one of curiosity and I've been trying not to make a big deal out of it because she would do it more. I guess I just feel sorry for my little one because he's being screamed at. I'm not a yeller myself, so I know she's not getting it from me or my husband. If you have any resources you could direct me to, I'd love to look into it. This is actually a subject that I get asked about all of the time, screaming. And usually with kids around the ages of one to three. Um, just really loud pitch screaming, often coming out of nowhere. We don't know why they're doing it. It's really triggering for so many parents. It's so hard to hear, right? It really, really hurts our ears. Um, which is probably one of the main reasons that it persists is because we are at a loss, as Anna said. So Anna, I wanna point out to you this idea of being at a loss about what to do about something like screaming. Because here's the deal, and this is one of those things that's a losing battle limit, right? We cannot actually physically stop someone from screaming. It's not like the car seat uh, where we can buckle them in because we've got to buckle them in. There's not much you can actually do to stop a child from screaming. And so it's all about our approach to it and taking the long view of walking them and guiding them through and out of a certain behavior, making that behavior irrelevant and unhelpful to them so that they have no real desire, no motivation to continue that behavior on. So it sounds like you're doing so many things right here, Anna, just having that curious voice and saying that you aren't a yeller yourself. What I think screaming usually comes down to is a deep sense of not being heard, of being frustrated, of not knowing how to express something within us that's intense in any other way. So often it's children who can't express themselves verbally yet enough, right? We see this often with one and two year olds where they don't have the words yet or they're so overwhelmed and so, you know, high, highly strung at that moment that they can't access the words, they, they can't use them. Or we see it as a result of frustrations, right? It coming from a place of deep frustration, like I'm trying to do this and I can't, and I'm just screaming. It's kind of like just an outlet of energy, like I've gotta get this out. But it can also come from a place of curiosity, like wow, I have a really powerful voice. Let me explore this auditory sensation, right? And just letting that voice out especially when it gets quite a reaction, right? The people around me really react when I scream and so it becomes kind of an interesting thing to try again and again. Maybe it even gets me what I want. Maybe it's worth screaming because I get caved into and I get things that I was asking for just because the screaming is so unpleasant for the adults to hear. Number one, regulate yourself. You absolutely have to calm down with regards to the screaming. I would go so far as to say you almost have to detach and ignore the screaming itself. That doesn't mean you have to ignore the child or their need, their frustration or their emotions, but the screaming itself needs to become a non-issue. Like you're so blasé about it, so nonchalant, so unruffled as Janet Lansbury calls it. So uninterested, like it doesn't even, you hardly even hear it. It doesn't even bother you, right? You need to make it not worth the while of the child who's screaming to scream. You can't give it power. You need to make it something that's really not interesting to do because no one really cares. If your child is repeatedly screaming or talking in a loud voice a lot of the time, also worth doing is checking their hearing and just making sure that there are nothing going on physically for them, you know, just checking in with your pediatrician or whoever it is that you see um, for that type of thing to make sure that there's no physical reason for them to be screaming, that it's not screaming in pain, that it's not some kind of expression of that. 
Once you've ruled out any physical reasons for your child to be screaming, you need to revisit the idea that this is a losing battle limit. It's something I explore in my course, Empathic Limits. One of the things we cover there is losing limits, losing battle limits. Losing battles are things that we can't actually set hard limits on, but we can create an environment where that behavior is no longer desirable. This is one of those cases. So punishing a child for screaming or trying to just say, no, they may not scream, you can't scream, trying to set a limit on it isn't gonna work because it's beyond your power. Just like pooping and sleeping and eating, it's not something that you get to control. What you do get to control is your reaction. So we've said that you need to regulate yourself, but you also need to not enter into a power struggle by trying to set a hard and fast limit. How do we avoid power struggles as parents? Well, we simply do so by sharing power. We avoid power struggles by not powering over our children, but rather sharing power with them and realizing that when they're screaming, there's really not very much that we can control in them. We're not gonna power over them. We're not going to try and control that behavior. Instead, we're going to make it undesirable and irrelevant by controlling our own reaction to it. Next is not to react to the scream itself, or at least certainly not intensely, but to react to what's going on. So if you detect that your child's frustrated, react to the frustration. If you detect that they're trying to express themselves, help them express themselves. But don't react to the scream itself. Disempower it by almost ignoring it. So you can say something like, mm, you're frustrated that those blocks fell. You can say, I'm frustrated, that's hard, right? So you're giving your child a tool to express it in a way that's easier for the people around them to hear it. If you absolutely have to relate to the screaming itself, you could say something like, oh, I can't hear you so well when you scream, that hurts my ears. Can you say it in a different voice? Or giving them the tools to say it themselves or saying something like, I'm hungry or I'm tired or I'm angry. Giving them the words that you think they might be needing, right? Is this what you're feeling? Is this what you're feeling? But asking them, you know, can you use a quieter voice? Another thing that tends to happen when our children scream is that we escalate the situation. So they scream, we start to get louder as well. I want you to bear in mind sharing your calm rather than joining their chaos, right? They're in a chaotic, high, uh, highly triggered state, perhaps, high intensity state. And our tendency because of our mirror neurons and because of the way we're wired is to get triggered by that and to join them in that intensity and to also get loud like stop screaming I can't hear you and the more they scream the louder they get the calmer you get so invite them instead into your calm talk even quieter so that they have to quieten themselves to hear you be even more silent even more observant even more calm so that their screaming is just disempowered. It doesn't escalate the situation to reflect their turmoil, but instead offers them to share of your calm. Like they're getting more and more intense and you're getting more and more calm and helping them to come down from that. If you want more on how to stay calm when you're triggered, the first steps to take, then watch my video with Dr. Laura Markham on stop, drop and breathe technique. Really, it comes down to disempowering screaming and not making it into a big deal, ignoring it, staying nonchalant, and just relating to your child and giving them the tools that they need to express themselves. For some children, it's a matter of a day or two, and for some children, it might take weeks or even months to overcome this behavior. But what will absolutely make it worse is if you empower it and if you get into a power struggle trying to set a limit that, frankly, you can't set. Instead, you really just step away, really just ignore it, and really focus on the connection with the child and on the communication they're trying to achieve, rather than on the scream itself, just not making that an issue.